What up, Alchemists? In this episode, we're going to create a multi-tenant Phoenix 1.3 application. We're going to use Apartment X library to handle the multi-tenancy, and we're going to use subdomains to differentiate um, our tenants. Starting from a brand new Phoenix 1.3 app, let's go ahead and get Apartment X added. I'm going to vim in our mix file. version is 2.3 and let's go ahead and grab that dependency mix steps get and mix steps compile let's now create our user schema and our tenant schema so let's generate a context here we'll put this under accounts Company will hold our schema, new companies, and it will have a subdomain. Let's go ahead and create the user resource under the accounts context now. We'll want the user's migration ran for every single tenant as we create them. So let's go ahead and move that migration over to the directory that Apartment X expects it at. Repo tenant migrations. I'm going to rename the table for users um, just because I don't need it namespaced. Let's rename it in the migration as well. And then also, I'm going to create an index for the subdomains. So we want this to be unique. Now at that place, let's go ahead and migrate our DB. Now this will just bring up our uh, companies table. Um, as like I said, the user tables will only be brought up for each company we create in the system. With that table up, let's go ahead and update our API for the create companies and create user functions. Open up our accounts and let's start with create company. So this takes in attributes and enters it into the database. But we're going to want to do this using apartment X instead. I'm going to use with and first we're going to create the change set. Taking those attributes. Next, we're going to insert it into the database and pattern match on it being successful. 
if it fails at this point, uh, width should go ahead and um, short circuit and just send us our error message. And finally, if that's all successful, we'll run apartment X and we will insert our, we will create a new tenant rather. That expects the repo and um, the key of the tenant. For ours, we're going to use the company subdomain. Now let's go ahead and update our create user. We'll do something pretty similar here. So we'll create a user change set. Take in the attributes. If that's successful, we'll run apartment X. And we'll do an insert this time. So insert expects the re repository, the change set, and the key. So our key will be subdomain. Since we don't have that variable, let's make sure we're passing it in to the function call. Now let's hop into IEX and take a look how Apartment X handles our database records for us. I've a list on the different modules in my iex.exs file. So if you haven't done that, you'll have to call the namespaces as well. So let's create a couple companies here. And the attribute, the only one we need is subdomain. We'll say this is company one. And as you can see, it created the Postgres schema called tenant company one. And the company one is the key of that. And also it ran our user migration and created the tenant company one user stable. Let's create one more company. So we have a couple to play with. All right. And then let's go ahead and also create some users for those companies. Accounts, create user. And we need to pass in the attributes. Let's do name. One, and we need to pass in the subdomain. So this would be company one. All right, that looked great. And let's create one for the other company. And let's do one more. Great. We've got our data segregated by tenant. Now let's see how we can set up Phoenix to access it by subdomains. First, let me go into our router here and add the routes for our users. Resources, uh, put out users, and that's the user controller. Let's go ahead and open up our user controller. Now I'm gonna override the action of controller of the controller behavior you can do this in uh, different spots um, if you want something more global but we'll just do it for now in this one so that takes an action or the connection rather okay, rid of that. so we want our subdomain so let's go ahead and grab the head of this list here subdomain we don't care about the tail. Oops. And we're going to split 
on string split the connection host we'll split it by period so that way you know www.domain.com it'll split it into three elements and we'll just grab the first piece and bind it to subdomain let's go ahead and write that the module name connection name connection and here's where we'll change the arity to three of all of our controller ac um, functions. So typically you just have the connection and then the parameters, right? We're also going to have the subdomain. Why I really like to do it this way is it forces you um, to always think about the subdomain in all of your actions um, so you, you're forced to create an arity of three to make any of these work. So let's go ahead and update our index to um, arity of three subdomain. And all we have to do now is update the API of our accounts list users. Let's go ahead and do that now. So list users. So this will need to know about the subdomain. So we'll need to pass that in as a parameter. And then we'll use apartment X. And we're going to grab all, expect the repo, the model, or the schema, user schema, and our key, the subdomain. Let's go back to our user controller and make sure we send it the subdomain. Let's see how this all works out. So to access my web server, I've gone ahead and added uh, company one subdomain and company two subdomain uh, to my loopback address. So let's get our server up and running. And let's connect to it via subdomain. So do company one and access the user's route. And sure enough, we just got the users for company one. Let's try the subdomain for company two. And there we go, Corey two, Corey two more. So we can see that we're definitely running multi-tenancy and the users are isolated to the tenant that they're assigned to. And that's all keyed off of the subdomain that we access the server with. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you just want to hang out and chat, uh, get a hold of me. Until next time, thanks.